Hey, we're back again, you guys. We're doing it. We're making podcasts every week. The new and experienced investor podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Alex Barnett. I'm the new guy. And I'm Joe. I'm the experienced guy. That's right. And with this podcast, we connect investors of all walks of life. Everybody. That's right. Whether you haven't done a deal yet to if you're doing $100 million in real estate. That's pretty much our audience. Did you know that? I don't know. Do we have somebody with a hundred million coming next week? Not they're not coming, but they're watching. Oh, okay. Got yeah, it. Yeah. Got it. So um take that, mom. Um, but uh we're really excited. We have an in guest or in studio guest. Uh he's a residential realtor slash short term rental buff. Um <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna learn all about him in just a second. But before we do, um let's talk about our meetup that we have coming up. On Monday. Really? Yeah. That quick? Yeah. What's the forecast like? It's uh, sunny. It's going to be 80 degrees out here in Orange County, California. No need to bring a jacket. No need to bring an umbrella. So Bring a jacket. Bring an umbrella. Okay. Just in case. You never can tell. This but, is but, California. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be completely okay. fine. Okay. Um, but Monday. we're Yeah, we're doing something Monday. really cool. Um, yeah. It's at Hangar 24. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be going over our new course. It's a free course. It's the Wholesale Startup Club. Actually, it's more than a course. It's a club. It's a club. Yeah. So we take you from doing, uh, from knowing nothing about wholesaling to doing $100 million in real estate yeah. in six months. Yeah. That's the claim. Um, yeah. Yeah. All rights reserved. And no, I mean, see, we're not charging anything, so it's free. So, you know, what can they what say? I mean. yeah. You know, exactly. It's like, it's not, we're like, <laughs> we're, you know, charging $25,000 or whatever. And they can say, well, yeah, they didn't do what they said. Yeah. You know, results not typical or yeah. results may vary is what we say <laughs> yeah. in the biz. So, um, yeah, make sure you show up. It's a really great event because you can meet people um, doing, you know, pretty much everything. I'm always really surprised at you know who shows up and then they when you go around the room you kind of say like why you're here what mm -hmm. you're doing mm -hmm. and um yeah. you know what everybody lists off i'm just like wow yeah. there's a ton of people here yeah and and by the way um they do charge you for parking but you can get uh, your ticket validated oh so make sure that you buy something to eat or drink or whatever, and then right there is the ticket validation and do it correctly as it has on the instructions because of the 70 or so 80 people that showed up last month, I get one call, Joe, I had to pay for parking. <laughs> <laughs> I go, well, I go how, how much more information should I give out? You know, it's like I tell them, I email them the, you know, the night before. It's like, here's the process. Here's what you need to do. And Joe, I had to pay for parking. Sorry. It, it's like, <laughs> okay. Sorry. But I mean, if you have to, if you forget and you end up paying for parking, don't call Joe and complain just for all of us. Yeah, please call Alex. <laughs> call, call Alex and Call complain. me and I'll be like, yeah. yeah, was it worth the value of $14? There, there to, you go. There, yeah. there you go. I think you got more than $14 worth of value. Yeah, I don't know. Go. If not, then we're not delivering. But yeah. anywho, meet us there. We're going to have a blast. What are we talking about? We're talking about the Wholesaling Startup Club. Oh, We're going to yeah. talk about You're wholesaling real estate. We are going to talk about I'm wholesale. I'm backing you up on that. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, it'll be my first TED Talk. So Ooh. please join us. Wow. I'll be doing, um, well, I went to the, the Dealmaker Weekend, so I know all oh, about yes. public there speaking now. And how was that? It was amazing. Yeah. We're gonna do a we're gonna do a whole recap next week. I think. Oh, we are okay. So okay, um, we'll save it and how I went from zero dollars to a hundred million dollars in real estate and nice. over the weekend. Nice. So make sure nice. you tune in to that. Nice. And yeah. Uh, yeah, nice. Yeah. So, anywho, let's stop messing around. Let's bring our guest into the studio. He's already here, so He's it makes here. it He's convenient. Sitting down right there. All right, I was building him up. But oh. anyway, <laughs> um, let's go ahead and meet Mr. John Shevsky. What's going on? Excited to be here, aside from the fee I paid for parking. And uh, <laughs> thanks for having me, guys. We do charge. We, own, right. we charge. own the lot now, so, so we just we we'll have validate. to validate. We'll yeah. validate. It's cash flow. Yeah. It's cash flow. It's gotta, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. Instant cash flow. A ton of cash flow and parking prices, for sure. Exactly. Um, you're from L.A. You get it. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and um, 
introduce yourself to the audience and let us know uh, kind of what you were doing <laughs> before real estate and what got you into real estate. Oh, yeah. Great. Um, first of all, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I was a comedian in uh, Los Angeles, if you want to call it that. A struggling artist is much more of a proper title. And um, Were was, you funny? Huh? Were you funny? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was great. I was okay. hilarious. I was, okay. hilarious. I, was, I, was, I was amazing. Uh, that's why I got my real estate license. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so uh, <laughs> I love when people ask you, how did comedy go? I was like, I got my real estate license. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, no, in all seriousness, I was just looking for ways to make, I started learning about like passive income. I didn't even know those things, right? It's only in the past, I would say, five to 10 years that it's become like normal for the middle class to like use that verbiage passive mm -hmm. income. So at the time it was like a newer thing and I was like on Reddit and I was like looking at stuff and I was like, I got to figure out a way that I could be this like artist that I am and get some money coming in. Cause I'm, I don't think money's going to come from art for me, for me. It happens for some people. Okay. I've seen it. Not for me. I was like, I'm just like scraping by. So, um, I started learning about real estate, started reading books. And then my brother and I decided my brother's an engineer. He kind of chose the square path. And I was always the guy off to the side, like, you idiot. Like, they're going to own you. Like, I'm an artist. I'm not letting them, like, they, I'm not going to have a square job. Meanwhile, my brother's got roof over his head. Him and his buddies, all engineers. They have a ton of free time after they're done at work. They're riding motorcycles, buying sports cars. And I'm like, I think I think I chose the wrong path. Like, it was like, it was yeah. like, like being a Mel Brooks character, like, constantly telling people, like, you dummies. <laughs> taking on that square life. You're wasting it all. And I'm just like completely broke and struggling and, and miserable. So my brother and I were like, all right, my brother's got the credit. I got the, uh, the vision and, uh, I educated myself and we decided to house hack for our first thing together. Um, we decided to turn my brother's, uh, house into our first rental to kind of proof of concept. And we bought our own house together, moved into that. And that kind of set me up on the real estate journey, um, of investing. And nice. I, yeah, I mean, and go ahead and interrupt if you want to ask questions along the way or guide me into other parts no, of the story. Good. Um, keep yeah. good. Keep you're going. Keep it all in. Yeah, keep going. Uh, I can tell minute details. I can really get into it. And I'm like, just Do stop it. me if it gets boring, oh, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I started getting into real estate investing. That plan got put into place. It was really exciting. Um, side note, while we were negotiating for the house, uh, I was not an agent or anything professional for real estate, but I was definitely like the one on the phone with the agent, like, tell them this. All right, now tell them this. Like, and I enjoyed the whole process of like, no, 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 let's do it this way. And I really like that. Fast forward a couple of years, um, my wife got pregnant with our second son. Yeah, way to go, dad. And a little, a little backstory. My first son, uh, we needed, uh, we needed help, not just from the good Lord, but from the science. Mm. And uh, so it was a challenge to have our first baby, and uh, that was a, a whole, a whole long. Uh, non-real estate story that I won't put you through, but we didn't think we had to be careful. Mm. So the second baby was a little bit of a surprise. Oh, So we have a science baby and a tequila baby. <laughs> <laughs> and the tequila baby, <laughs> the tequila baby, uh, my wife wrote that joke. By the way. <laughs> uh, but the tequila baby was my wake up call of like, all right, I, uh, I got to figure something out. Yeah. And my brother was just like, dude, just go be a realtor. You already know real estate. And I was like, no, dude, I'm a comedy writer. <laughs> not some freaking shill in a real estate. You know, I'm not going to wear a sport coat. <laughs> By the way, I have a great sport coat collection now. <laughs> yeah, Two really great sport, sport coats. <laughs> I bust them out for special occasions. <laughs> it's a privilege. Uh, but yeah, my brother told me that and I was like, no. Nah. And then I started studying like to get my exam, to get my license. And I had so much fun learning. I had to teach myself how to learn because traditionally I'm a horrible test taker. I would write these like Frank Zappa style songs and like put like real estate you know, an acre is, you know, 43,000 sexy feet. <laughs> do, 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 do. And I'd like put the music to it. I'd mix it. I'd mix it on my computer. Oh, you actually made these songs. Oh, yeah, dude. It's insane. <laughs> I, they're on some hard drive somewhere, but <laughs> okay. we're not going to look for that because <laughs> you don't want to find that hard drive. <laughs> um, so I, and then I would put them on, on my, uh, in my phone or my iPad, whatever, iPod at, the, at that time. And then I would just go for bike rides and listen to all the stuff I was trying to memorize for real estate. And in that process, I like fell in love with like all that real estate stuff. Accidentally met my mentor. I went to the gym. This is a really long story, but it's fun still for Keep me. Going. So I went to the gym um, and I was waiting for a fish burrito from this Mexican restaurant after the gym, right? That's so <laughs> specific. Oh, dude, I love a good, dude, a good fried fish burrito. It's like, dude, if you can make Mexican food fattier than it already is, you're like, let's make it more American and fry that fish. Uh, so I'm waiting for the fish burrito from Santana's and I look and there's a real estate office. 
and I look at, at all the listings in the window and I'm just browsing, standing there. And this dude pops his head out the door and goes like, hey, man, you, you looking to buy or sell some real estate? And I was just like, thanks, man. I just got my house. Uh, but I'm thinking about getting into the business. And he gave me his card. It's like, let's let's get coffee sometime. And I was like, oh, sweet. Uh, went out for lunch with him or whatever, talked about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get my, get, I'm going to go get my license, you know? Like, so, uh, yeah, went, got my license, did all the studying I told you about, called him on the way home, said, woo, passed my test, dude. What's next? <laughs> and he was just like, yeah. who is this? Like, <laughs> we haven't talked in six months. Who, what? And, I, and, uh, and he's like, come on down to the office. I'll introduce you to people. We can, we can figure this all out. And then just started right then and there shadowing my buddy, Chris, uh, who's still a great friend and mentor to me today. So I, uh, yeah, I just shattered him nonstop. I mean, I literally would wait outside the door when he's in the restroom. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like I was there, you know, what are you doing? And there? I'm not like a 20 year old kid getting into real estate. I'm already in my like, what are they late thirties, you know, like, but still I'm really good at just like being a little kid and being like, all right, what do I got to do? So I just uh, hung out with him and uh, shattered him, did some deals with him. And then, uh, yeah, just, that was it. And here I am and loving it still years later. And yeah. Awesome. So, um, have you found your passive income yet? No, not the way I would like. Uh, oh, okay. I feel like it's very el elusive. You know, um, I feel like by the time you learn about certain things that are broadcast through like our bigger groups, you know, uh, that market's already emerged. So mm -hmm. you read the book on like the emerging market and you're like, Oh mm -hmm. sweet. And you're like that, that market's emerging. It's like, no, no, no. They already published the book, dude. <laughs> yeah. The emerging market now is that that author made this really cool book about that emerging market. <laughs> and now he's making a good living or he or she are making a good living off that book that you're reading about it. Go find an emerging market, which is a whole nother great experience as an investor. Right? Yeah. Like it's a lesson Yeah. to find that, to say, Oh, like there's more risk. That author took a lot of risk getting involved in that, that mm -hmm. emerging market. That now I'm not necessarily having to do, but the cash flow is not going to be there as much. Right. Um, so the, yeah, the learning experience for passive income is like I thought, like I'll just get one short term rental and mm -hmm. then I don't have to follow up on all these leads for real estate. There you go. Because anyone in the real estate profession knows, like it's kind of exhausting, right? <laughs> Open houses are fun, but yeah. they can be exhausting. Sure. So yeah, I guess, does that answer your question for passive? I'm, I'm it does. Still yeah. on the hunt, and I'm hungry AF. Exactly. When when you took your real estate exam, what what did you score? They don't tell you what you scored. No, see, that's not the right answer. 100%. 100% because nobody can prove it. <laughs> you know? There hey, you go. Joe, I scored 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you're really one. smart. Joe, you've got me here being honest, and I didn't remember to be witty above <laughs> no, honest. No, yeah, you're a comedian. Yeah. I actually got extra credit. They said you're the best realtor we've ever there seen. There you go. <laughs> there you, you go. You, scored. Yeah. You, you wrote the test, John. Yeah. I said, Absolutely. Yeah. Good uh, job. I let me get be honest with you, Joe. I remember you could hear the gasps in the room of people like not knowing what's going on. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're like sitting there. <laughs> yeah. oh. and, and I'm sitting there. And like I said, I'm traditionally not a good test taker. I'm a total hippie. I'm an artist. I'm a flunk out, like autodidactic kind of guy that's like, don't test me. Life will be a good test, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm in there going, and I studied like crazy for this thing for six months. I'm thinking as I take in the test, I'm like, John, you, you might have to take this thing again. <laughs> no. Like it was, so, it was so there's like always that doubt. It's because yeah. it's it's a yeah. it's weird test, you know. Oh, no, and, yeah, and there's stuff on it. That they're you're like, trying to weed people out. Yeah, you know, it's like real estate. They don't do a good enough job, thing. though, Joe. I'm pretty sure the yeah, bar. True. I deal with a lot of knuckle yeah. draggers. Yeah, <laughs> the diamonds true. shine through. But true. I am amazed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the ability to memorize things and take tests doesn't mean anything with actual intelligence. But holy s h i t, it's uh, That's, real estate's a hilarious world. Yeah, <laughs> and and how much of the real estate exam that you learn, do you actually use today? I actually like joke about the acreage and I still forget the exact amount of an acreage. Like mm -hmm. when I look at, when I'm looking at a property for a client, I'm like, if I see it around 40,000 feet, square feet, I'm like, yeah, 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 that's an acre. <laughs> and like, an that acre. was one of the easiest things to memorize. And I'm still just like, <laughs> what is it? 43,000? Is it 42? Does anyone remember it offhand? Is it 42? Oh, it was, it was it. 43 years ago for me. So I don't I don't really well, a thousand square feet yeah. for every year, Joe. That's <laughs> yeah. how you remember this kind of That's stuff. That's true. That could be. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, but, thank you. So do you think that they should make the test more relevant to the... I mean, this goes for all education, right? For colleges and schools and whatever else. Do you think it should be more relevant to the actual... Uh, thing that we're doing that's not in school? Or do you think it needs to be like based on other stuff just to weed out people's ability to like memorize and like have the, I guess the intelligence to just 
pass it any test that they're given. Do you know what I'm saying? Is that a yeah? Uh, I don't know. I thought we were interviewing him, but yeah. he's, he's asking. Yeah, he's flipping it around. Yeah, yeah. It's anyways, crazy. Joe Rogan you. Uh, no, no. I, I I agree with you. It's it's really trying to weed out the really low bar. Yeah, because like you said, I, and I'm sorry, but yeah. I'm going to get in trouble here if I keep going. I don't get in I trouble am. for me, Joe. Let I'm me take get, this one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it getting in trouble here <laughs> if I don't. So you, you pass, okay? Yeah. So then you said you had a mentor. So what, yeah. what did the mentor teach you? Well, it was about the age. Because this is important. What did the mentor teach me? Yeah. Teach me? Well, I mean, you know, one day you woke up and you said, I'm going to take the real estate exam. The, the, you know, after you pass it, you have to wake up and say, well, what the hell am I going to do with yeah. this? You know, yep. what was that for you? Well, I mean, thank, are you still searching for it? No, I thank God. I mean, I didn't find it. This is the thing. I, and I always joke about this in entertainment. It's like I wanted to have mentors that I felt were the caliber. And I guess maybe not in the caliber. That sounds pretentious, but linked up in a way that like I learn and want to interact and spend a lot of time with a human being. Mm-hmm. Right. Entertainment's a very different world than That's real estate. That's what a wife is for. But That's keep right. Going. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That sounds like a great song. What a wife is for. Um, uh, as my wife listens to this, that is what a wife is for. Behind every good man is a woman who has a SHIT he's, he's together. He's been married for a while, I can oh, tell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Babe, you know that you're the boss. Whatever Joe says is not, I do not, I'm not agreeing necessarily unless he praises you. You are the king of the house, lady. Uh, I, I think I was ready for a good mentor and I was looking for it in comedy. I worked under Ralphie May for quite a while and he was an amazing mentor, but also at the same time we're dealing with artists. So Ralphie, who was brilliant, very giving, wonderful person. And he literally gave me the money for my engagement ring for my wife. Uh, he's also an artist. So like there are things uh, and you can confirm with some of my other friends who also are like my buddy Gary who opened for him for years. There's a lot of stuff where it's like, you just want people that like, show up when you say like, Hey, be there Thursday at 3 PM. And they're just there and they're focused. And you don't want people that are like, Oh, I'm on a flight to Albuquerque. And you're like, what do you, what do you mean, dude? Like, <laughs> you know, it's like the world of, this is why it's so good in real estate. Uh, the world of working with artists. Most of my life, I'm able to communicate with contractors all right now. Cause I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I get it. I see where you're coming from because <laughs> there's this, uh, this thing. And I feel like I got that when my buddy Chris handed out his hand with the card and, and welcomed me on and said, yeah, dude, like you're welcome to shadow. And that happens in, in stand up and, and in LA and you know, that's how everyone's careers go. Right. But it never happened for me there. And I think I was at the right point in real estate where I was mature enough and also just kind of knew like it's about showing up, not just talking and not spending time with your head in the books. It's about physically waking up, being there in person and being okay with like, I don't know when I'm going home tonight, when my boss, when my, when my master, whatever you want to call the apprenticer, what is the word for it? It is a master in the old days, but right. Yeah, that's probably a bad word. It's bad, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I'm thinking of Chris Rock. What you my master? Yeah, we, yeah, we, <laughs> Chris, we changed Chris Rock we changed the master bedroom to a primary. I still bedroom. say no. I still you say know. master bedroom, and I look people in the eye like it's a master bedroom, and I'm <laughs> yeah. sending you a picture yeah. of the couple yeah. that wants to buy this house, <laughs> I mean, and I hope you judge them based on the photo. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I can't keep up with culture. I'm too old. Um, <laughs> I still call it a master bedroom because uh, I do the Metallica thing when I walk into a master, master. bedroom. If I'm showing, I always go master. Bedroom. <laughs> so if I had to change it, what would I say? Main bedroom. Like James Hetfield would be like, kid, like get out of here, you little weakling. Like, no, it's a master bedroom, dude. Um, right? Like, what are they doing in a recording studio? Who did the master mix? It's not called a master mix. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. who mastered yeah, that album. You mean mix. who did the primary of the album? Like, there's so many syllables. Uh, but. Uh, in all seriousness, yeah, just knowing like when your master that you're working under is like, it's okay to, like I told my wife, like, I'm going to be doing this, like whatever he says to do. So some nights it's going to be like a lawyer's schedule where I'm coming home at 10 o'clock because that's how long the day takes. So knowing how to, yeah. 10 well, o'clock? Yeah. What Why are you, are you doing, oh, doing my buddy, My buddy Chris, who is still a great friend of mine, and I still call him for things uh, all the time, amazing realtor. This dude works like a lawyer. Like he works like a dog for his clients. He's ethical and wants to like give the best service he can. And like he really does like have these long. I mean, they do exist. He he does that. Which by the way, I don't work under him because I cannot <laughs> keep up with that. And both both <laughs> Ralphie and I got home at three, dude. Um, I learned because of both Ralphie and my bankers my, hours. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> dude. Oh, hey, bankers hours guaranteed. <laughs> I don't work on anything. What day is it? I gotta go. <laughs> I'll be at shul if you need me. I can't. 
yeah, I can't do that because yeah, like Ralphie passed away early, you know, died in his hotel room. What else is new? And then my other mentor, Kamel, uh, m- my best friend's dad was a mentor, died on a hunting trip, you know, pulled the trigger, killed a deer, dead. And it's like these people work their butts off. They're working to achieve these crazy, crazy goals. They're working to support their community, their family. These are, by the way, very charitable people that are constantly giving and but at the end of the day, it's like, well, if you're not here, like, that's what we all need. I don't need your money. Mm-hmm. I don't need you to, like, work hard to sh- set an example. Be re- here. Be re- alive. Remind me not to mentor him. He's got too many deaths in his life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's very dangerous. Pattern. I, I, I see the pattern. <laughs> Joe, they're actually making an indie horror film based yeah. on my mentorship. Yeah. Wow. The Black Widow mentorship. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not good. The twist? That's I good. killed them. I oh, just, I gosh. Was, and, it was, and he admitted it. It's, it's, <laughs> wow. It was really fun. And it's, I like the taste of blood. <laughs> and I don't like to cook meat, so I just eat them. They're, they were eaten, if you didn't uh, wow. hear about the stories. It's still a mystery. How would the guy with this much hair, could they not have found me by now, right? <laughs> we found pubes or bare beard hair or something from him. Um, <laughs> there's ranch dressing from this place in Joshua Tree in it. I think we found a lead. Um, oh best ranch God. in Joshua Tree, by the way, Joshua Tree Saloon. Second best ranch. Crown squirrel. All right. Oh, Let's nice. go on with the okay. story. Huge wow. ranch. He knows a lot ranch. about Joshua Tree. I, I thought you were going to say ranch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows a lot about Joshua Tree, which we we learned firsthand. Um, yeah, and we don't talk about. <laughs> that's right. We don't talk about. It. We don't talk about first, Bruno. We the don't first talk about rule of Joshua we, Tree. No, yeah, we don't um, talk about it. But yeah, John's opened my eyes to um, the dressing. wonders and the splendors of Joshua Tree. But I'll never go back there. Was he, was he <laughs> the reason really we went out there? No. No. Okay. Good. No. It's so a little Joe. So you you guys went out there for. We did a flip. The flip you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was late 2021. Wrong wrong time. Yeah. No, actually, it was the right right time. time. It was somebody wasn't watching the ball. Can I tell you what what's yeah. what's confusing about that? Without so that you can take the blame off of your shoulders and yes, just realize thank it. You. No, 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 do, leave it, it do it, do it, do it, do it, there. do it. Come on, do it. Take the blame off. It's I not our fault. Can't watch your apprentice get another crow's foot because of this. <laughs> I have to help. <laughs> no, here's the thing. It, it, it's you know we talk about these markets and we you go like, you should have known. We should have known this. We should have known that. But this is why it's so essential to have. People, whether it's an agent or just real estate professionals that know a certain market really well, almost street by street, because during the pandy, what happened with those prices is everything in Joshua Tree was booked up nonstop. Mm -hmm. Things were selling nonstop. Mm -hmm. When the pandemic ended and we went back to regular Joshua Tree market, prices were still elevated in areas where it's like, well, those aren't like actual really booked rentals. In Joshua Tree. So for a good example for you, there's areas of like like downtown Joshua Tree where houses are going for three, four, five hundred thousand dollars that the average daily rate that you're going to get there is just not going to equate to that at all. So you're going to have a few buyers that are like just wanted to live out there. You're going to have a few buyers like that are just I mean, that's that's basically it. But the, the investors that are looking for a return on a short term rental, there's areas there where it's like, oh, you can spend the same amount of money and look at all the numbers and tick off your buy box and say, oh, this square footage makes sense. And it's right in the center of town. It's a lot different than like having something like, you know, Laguna Beach, like on, on the main street, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to get kind of like blindsided by where things are street by street there until after the dust settles. And you're like, all right, here's the more, I should say permanent, but that's a pretty absolutist word. But here's the more realistic market that is kind of before and after the pandemic. It's different. It's changed, you know? And that that blip was really hard. And in fact, I still get people that'll be like, oh, these numbers look great over here. And I'm like, did you find out? Like a client will tell me like, oh, I really like this. Can you give me this info? And I'll show it to him and say like, be careful with these dates that this person just showed you. Mm. And they're proving, they're trying to prove their case by how much they're property is valued at, right? The net operating income of this property. And you're mm-hmm. like, that was during an anomaly year. Mm-hmm. Let's see what they got before that. Oh, they didn't own it before that. Okay. Now we have to just like wipe all their pro formers away and say, let's just look at the data because it's, Ooh. and it's so easy to get tricked in any market. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in any market, I was just asking you about uh, Nevada. Mm-hmm. It was a Henderson, mm-hmm. Barry and the Hendersons. Yeah. Henderson. I was like, I don't know about it. Yeah. And now from what I've learned, it's like, no, you got to know a little, I got to know more. Yeah. Than just like, Looks good. Let's do it. I'm like, yeah. I got to know. I got to talk to 10 people. Three of them got to be someone I know. You yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> I got to like make some lists and write on some napkins. So don't hate yourself for, you know, going to a spot and being like, oh, I should have known better. It's like, Thank it's you. really what, hard. What What Thank is you. your market now? 
Josh, I mean, I mostly I so no, I, I, I yeah, I'm like I'm like a, a I'm a realtor torn in between two two lands. Yeah, <laughs> uh, don't tell my wife, but I have a family in Joshua Tree. <laughs> <laughs> my redhead That's wife is in funny. Joshua Tree. <laughs> That's uh, not funny. <laughs> the ranch is out there, yeah. and so is Rhonda. <laughs> I'm just joking, babe. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm never gonna be able to spend the night out there again. <laughs> yeah. Um, get, yeah, we've been get the so couch long. ready. Yeah, <laughs> get the. Well, that's the beauty of owning properties. Is like, I don't sleep on the couch. I sleep in my short-term rental. Yeah. You want to fight with me? Yeah, I'll yeah. go sleep in the short-term rental. Oh, that's a good idea. That's, that's right. Idea. I don't have a hot tub in my regular house. I'm going yeah. to the short-term rental. <laughs> Play pinball. That's right. I got my Terminator game. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, I, I Joshua Tree's my my. It's become more of my uh, main market for me, and I don't mind it because I road dog back and forth, and I love being there. But I, I'm a residential realtor in SoCal, so like I still have a ton, ton of clients in in LA and Orange County. It's just, and I don't mind it because I I my aesthetic need as a um, person is like I got to be having a different sensory experience where I start to go insane. So if I'm in the same, like I used to work in tattoo shops and like, or, or in a writer's room and you're just like, all right, dude, like, can we go for a walk? Like, what are we doing here? Like, I, I got to come back here tomorrow. Like, is this some <laughs> sort of weird, like cosmic prison sentence? It's like, I got to be somewhere different. So I like that one day I'm in Redondo. Another day I'm in Burbank. Like I find my favorite sushi restaurants, my favorite Spanish food, my favorite ranch dressing, for example. <laughs> so I do like it. It's, it's heavy on the pocketbook. Uh, for gas, get a Tesla. I have a Honda, and I it it's got really good auto. What do you call um, cruise control? It's not as good as Tesla, but it's yeah. nice. I can't get a Tesla after what Elon get has been spouting get a about. Tesla. <laughs> I just I saw a bumper sticker on a Tesla that said I I bought this before Elon went crazy and made me laugh. <laughs> oh my God. I don't keep up with him anymore. I saw him on a Joe Rogan interview like he ten years fine. ago. He seemed cool, and then now everyone's like, "He's the worst." I'm like, "He is." I he's just what did he do? He's got that Starlink, and he won't let everyone use it or something. I, I can't keep up with society and the news anymore. Wow. Um, well, I think it's good that you kind of became a connoisseur of Joshua Tree because it, it's still because I I definitely noticed a lot of people went out there like you said, and then a lot of people got burned. You yeah. know, it's like we've even tried to work on somewhere we couldn't even make it with creative terms. Oh, like dude. we tried so hard, I and it was just like she just bought it too high. Yeah, and anything that we offer her, it just it won't make sense. That so. that deal was difficult because we were so close, and I was so excited, and it was going to work out. They had a great interest rate. They had a lot of equity in it. We were working on the balloon payment, but there's just simple stuff where I'm like, hey, dude not only do I know about this neighborhood, but like I literally, so this is something I would just say a uh, recommendation for anybody listening. If you're doing a deal, part of my underwriting process, which is an art, everyone has their own style. But if you take, like I started with like Tony uh, Robinson and Omid, like I took their underwriting style for short-term rentals. Um, and part of my process though, is not just to sit alone and do that. Like I love to interview friends that are in that market. I love to just send them a deal. Cause I like it when someone does it to me too. I love to send them a deal and say, what do you think about this property? Here's my plan with it. Here's what I'm expecting. Do you think mm -hmm. I'm, am I missing something? Cause what, like one of the benefits of me having a million jobs and failing at entertainment and all that stuff throughout my entire <laughs> life. But one of the benefits is like working in production and being around all these other departments and realizing like, dude, like there are these common patterns of like teamwork and how to get something done, who to consult with, mm -hmm. how to make certain decisions. And it's a privilege to be able to know somebody that knows what they're talking about. And if you know three or four, like, I like three or four people, like my buddy, Travis, I send him stuff. My buddy, will meet. I'm like, what do you think? Am I missing something? Mm -hmm. like, which is great for Navy SEAL. Like Jocko talks about that kind of stuff. Like, Hey, am I, did I forget something about this plan before we go in there? Right. It's like, and dude, like that on that deal, like Travis, I remember him saying like, you know, in Travis's voice, what are the grosses in that area? <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's a good question, man. Like I took her word for it. I was mm -hmm. busy on all this other stuff. Let me go look at the 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 gross income. And I found that what I want to achieve, my meager goals there, there were nothing out of this world, mm -hmm. just decent cash flow there. I was like, oh, I'd have to be the Michael Jordan of this area. There's like two other properties grossing that much. And I was like, that's one red flag. I'm willing to take that risk. Then I went farther. Let's do a full br deal breakdown. <laughs> so... No, this is exciting because I love this deal and I was so excited about yeah. it. And it was the closest I've been to a creative finance. Yeah. And I've been getting into creative finance uh, opportunities with you. Like Alex is, is my dude for this stuff. And he's presenting me with stuff. I sent him my buy box. He's presenting me with these awesome, awesome deals. And this one was so close. 
And the negotiations was fun. I mm-hmm. love the dance. Mm-hmm. I love like bonding. You heard me on yeah. the phone with her. Oh, I yeah. love like asking the questions and what is it? Uh, who is it? Uh, you talked. Voss. You talked for twenty minutes about hummus on one of the on one well, of. Well, she's the... she's she's uh, her she's Israeli, so yeah. of course we start going like, oh, what kind of hummus are you into? Uh, <laughs> we talked about a lot of stuff, dude. <laughs> but I just remember I was sitting there for like twenty minutes. And you guys are going back and forth about hummus, and like I don't know where to interject on this, what? but I'm just gonna wait till the numbers start going. What were the you same thing? What were you fool you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he does the same. He's talking to an old man, 110 years old, and in there they're going over. Hey, yeah, I used to golf over here. Or whatever. It's like, what does that have to do with buying a house? It's you know, that I'm, I'm sh- like this. Like, you're, you're in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, don't like this. You might take a wrong turn. On. I mean, and it does sometimes, and, it, and it's a risk that I take because I like to walk that line. And there's some pleasure in like getting to know another human being. Yeah. And, it, and most of the time, it does make the deals better, and it builds hey. it builds trust true. between two people. That's like, true. It's most things in life are like good sex, right? You want to have it, and whatever the terms are that you both agreed on initially, you're at the end. You're like, hey, "That was that's pretty good, right?" And then the other person isn't like, "I don't know, that wasn't what I wanted." You're like, oh, "Crap!" <laughs> but when the other person's like, "Hey, let's like go get some Thai food," you know, and like, and like maybe you're having a relationship, or maybe you're like, "I'll call you next time in town." Whatever it is, you want that good feeling. And real estate and most other things are the same way, where it's like, I want it to be like we agree on something, we meet that thing together. And then, like, later on, you're still friends. Like, I love to, mm-hmm. like, you know, like, yeah, I love to be able to be, like, two years later, n- not necessarily for sex. It sounds really bad. My wife's fault. <laughs> but, like, I still, I'm still friends with, like, <laughs> ex-girlfriends and friends, like, because it's, like, well, it was a good thing. Like, mm-hmm. we didn't we didn't make it last forever, but it was nice. And I think the same thing with real estate. You want to be able to call them up a year later, be like, hey, I got another deal, or, right. hey, what do you think about this? Or, you hey, ready to sell. Ha- yeah. yeah. Or, or just, <laughs> how you doing? Yeah. You know, I don't know. It's nice to just be in on good terms with other people. Uh, I guess that's the Jew in me. Wait, I got to leave this country. You got a place I can stay. Anyone got an attic? You know, you just want to be friends with everyone. It's nice. It's just a security thing, right? Everybody good? No one wants to kill me? Okay, great. Can I hide in your place? Um, so the, the, the bonding of, of hummus, I mean, that's the ranch, it's the ranch of the Middle East. We we're just talking about ranch, right? Like you got to have hummus. And we had a lot of stuff that we talked about. Too. No, she started, yeah, I just, she started talking about crystals, and I was like, right. "Oh, dude, I like crystals. They're pretty rad." And she's like, <laughs> yeah. "We started talking about all this stuff." Yep. We ended up hanging up the phone, like, "Look, I am, look, yeah. I am." <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, the deal just didn't work out. So here's what happened: she has this property, sunk a bunch of money into it. It's in the wrong neighborhood for the amount of money she sunk into it, and she sunk all the money into the interior of the house, which is beautiful, it and it made good. the house nice. Mm-hmm. And I walked the house; I did a preview of it. Great house. She did great work. Her family, of course, they've done other real estate. They're Israeli, right? Bro, what do you think <laughs> I do with my time and my money? Why I have this old T1000 tr- pickup truck? Every Israeli does uh, uh, does uh, real estate in Southern California. Um, where else do you think they get the money for that hummus, bro? <laughs> so we, we had great conversations, great connections. But she comes from a long-term rental background and a house flipping background. Great does not apply nearly as much to, you don't just know this other niche of real estate. Mm-hmm. You guys all know that. We all know this. Mm-hmm. Anyone listening probably knows this or is learning this right now. Mm-hmm. Just because you know one form of real estate, that means nothing, right? So she did a lot of this stuff, but the opportunity cost that she spent 100 or 200 grand fixing this house up is like, this yard, it's on a, I think it was on a half acre, mm-hmm. which I don't know how many square feet that is. <laughs> 20,000 20, <laughs> square feet. Yeah, 20,000 something. It's not 20,000 even. I would remember that. <laughs> But she spent all this money and time on that, and this whole backyard needs another eighty to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of amenities. Mm-hmm. Because as we're talking about with Joshua Tree, it's like people are coming out there to hang out in the sauna, to do the sun deck thing, to take pictures by Joshua trees, to take pictures by rocks, to be in a luxury pool, all those things. And so clothing optional clothing. Oh, that's another thing. I always tell my clients too. Like, well, they'll be like, this place is on four acres, and I'll go look at it for them, or I'll already know the property, and I'll be like. Yeah, but it's like it's four acres and it's like surrounded by like hills have eyes and Winnebago's from Breaking Bad. <laughs> That's not the same as like four <laughs> acres with rocky stuff around it. Because like, yeah. people do. I mean, we speaking of Rogan, we know like, you want to get some sun on your nads. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the vitamin D. <laughs> it's you got to do that, right? Okay. <laughs> Am I talking to a pink nad group? I mean, guys, it's actually good for you. Trust me, it's great. It doesn't. You can. I have a horrible body. It looks like a big blob, and it's still. I'm like, it's worth the shame to get some, some light on these guys. And it, when it heats up, it feels great. By the way, so. I totally understand the avatar, which, by the way, I've been going to Joshua Tree since I was a kid. So I love it out there before I was ever into real estate. So I understand who's going there. Like, what is the 
guest that's staying in your place. So she spent all that money fixing it up. Beautiful. And got, has a great rate on this house. Beautiful. It's in a neighborhood that's okay. And again, with consulting with friends, uh, my buddy Omid has uh, properties in there. My buddy Casey has properties in there. I, I, I mean, the list goes on. Like, I know the neighborhood down to a T. So I'm like, okay, I should either be yay or nay on this property. I'm excited because my friends own property here and they're all happy with them. But the thing with short-term rentals or I guess any real estate, margins are so thin that if you make some a couple little mistakes, you go like, that was, that was everything. Oh, that mm -hmm. propane is going to be $700 every six months instead of a hundred. That's cutting into it. Oh, like the washing machine needs to like, there's these little things that if you just don't calculate them right, or what's my cleaner going to charge to go clean that place every time, every turn is going to cost this much. And before you know it, like that eats into a, you know, a thousand, two thousand $2,000 a month. If you're even getting, get that for cash flow, Right. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty far along on the deal. She agrees to something. Stop me if I'm boring you guys too. No, I'm good. so so worried that I've just yeah. like hijacked the podcast <laughs> you and you're like, we it. don't want to hear your stupid deal, John. This is our deals. <laughs> I don't know. We we've had negotiations. We've had three or four really good, successful phone calls. A lot of bonding over the hummus, like I said, which is important to some of us. And <laughs> Chris Voss would say that's a really good way to negotiate. Um, we we're we're making this headway. And after I go and consult with a couple of my buddies. Um, that's the thing. The thing that comes up is that one red flag. I was like, okay, we're going to have to Michael Jordan this thing to get the gross we want. I'm like, okay. And I have a, I have a little thing, a, a little uh, pact with myself for my business partner. And just in general, uh, it's, I'm okay with one red flag cause life is risky. But if you add a second red flag to it, to anything, right. Mm -hmm. The restaurant seems a little weird. That's one red flag. But then like, so it seems a little weird. And then like, someone walks out of the bathroom and they're like, <laughs> or like it's got a C written up there and it seems kind of weird. It smells funny. Like these two red flags. I'm like, I don't want to get to the pattern, the Orion's belt of, of red flags. I don't want three. If I, if I'm past one, I'm like, all right, turn back. Yeah. So one's cool. Two. I'm like, I don't have room for three. I'm a conservative underwriter. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So the gross was a problem, but what we negotiated for their balloon payment was they want this like hundred and some odd grand back in seven years. And I'm like, cool. And she's talking to me when we're going and I'm taking it at face value that like, it's California, this stuff's going up. Mm -hmm. But in that neighborhood for that kind of property, I'm like, let me just go back and do my napkin. You know, I'm a grade school, yeah. <laughs> just, just writing down a couple numbers. I'm like, let me just go back and just look at what the appreciation and depreciation looks like. It's depreciating like in that neighborhood. It's going right. down. Yeah. It's not like the rest of SoCal, which is mostly residential. This is kind of a residential area that turned into a vacation market. Mm -hmm. So it's completely unique. So in order to pay her back in seven years with that balloon payment, the plan was, is that we're going to refinance the property. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pull out the money because this property is going up in value. She keeps telling me that through the deal and I'm taking it at face value. I'm mm -hmm. believing her. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's going down in value, no bueno. Mm -hmm. Also the purchase price, because it's a creative finance deal, I'm going to pay more than what this thing is worth. Right. And she's telling me on the phone, it's worth as much. And I'm like, I totally respect your opinion here, but I'm a residential realtor and this is my market. And this place is worth about $80,000 less than what we're going to go under contract for. Yeah. But I'm okay to pay that. If you give me that, that contingency plan of like, if I can't refinance it and get, pull all that money out that we push it off every year. Yeah. And what she came up with was 40 K a year to write her a check for 40 K a year. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So at first Simple. my partner and I were like, okay with that. And then when I started seeing like depreciation, I'm like, this isn't a contingency plan. Yeah. We're just going to be writing a check for 40 grand a year. <laughs> right. And you know, Lord willing in seven years, I'm like 40 grand. Here you go. Just <laughs> break off a little bite of that Bitcoin. Take it. I don't even notice it. <laughs> But, but I don't want to put myself and my partner in that risk of like, ah, it's been a real tough seven years yeah. and uh, I owe 40 grand or I'm going to lose this house that I put all this money into and all this time into. And yeah. being that it's a short-term rental and not a long-term rental, it's like, this is not a passive investment. This is like, I'm buying myself a little business, yeah, a little exactly. hotel. Yeah. I don't want to work hard. I'm already working hard on my own place. I don't want to work hard for, on my second place and be like, oh, that money's not mine. It's like waste of opportunity costs for my yep. brain and my, my waking hours. Yeah. So we had to pass it up. It was really emotional on the phone with her. I felt really bad because we had gone so far I know. and she, she kind of kept pressing this, like, that's not fair for us. And I was just like, Hey, like you're asking me to buy a bad deal and you guys yeah. don't want to budge on this stuff. And like, yeah. I'm telling you all this data in good faith. Mm -hmm. I want to buy this, but you got to work with me. And at the end of the day, she wouldn't do it. just wouldn't do it. And, um, 
Yeah, and I haven't still, I haven't reached out to her I, I since think then. It's still there. That's, that's a that's a good lead for a listing, don't you think? It won't. It, no, it was listed forever. It's still listed. It's still she kept telling me on the phone. Yeah. She's like, she's like, well, we're just gonna put it back on the market. I'm like, honey, <laughs> it's on the friggin' market. <laughs> yeah. Let me just tell you something. In SoCal, yeah. if it's on the market, yeah. and no one, you're, I, I kept telling her, I was like, your agent would call you right now and be like, I've got three offers. Yeah. Like it's on the market. Yeah. It's on Zillow. It's on Redfin. It's on the MLS. Mm-hmm. Like she's like, well, no, no. Our agent told us is like. I'm yeah, looking at it right now, baby. Yeah, I just want you to know, like, yeah. I'm, I'm being honest with you. Like, yeah. I was like, it's a hot commodity real estate. In this, if it was priced right, you'd mm-hmm. have people calling your agent, yeah. and your agent would be calling you, like, yeah. hey, the prop, like, I got offers. Yeah, yeah. So Let's do I was this. like, so it, it's, and I, I get where she's coming from an emotional level. She spent a couple hundred grand fixing it up. It was a bad call. She didn't consult with the right people to do right. it. But I was like, I can't buy that deal and then take on your bad burden. I can yeah. help you out and make this work for both of us, but I can't just buy your bad deal. Exactly. And so I'm going to call her tonight when this podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and I heard something over. Did you guys know I went to Dealmaker Weekend? Yes. Yeah, okay. You, know, so, you told me seven times. I was excited. So at Dealmaker Weekend. <laughs> they, <laughs> no, they just broke it down, which is like real simple. It's a, We all know it. It's like. Uh, the way that these creative deals work is like someone names the price and someone names the terms and then it can work like that, but it can't be, I name the price and I name the terms, you know, it's just, it's never going to go to the closing table that way. So that's great. Uh, that's the way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Because what over time, uh, like oh, theoretically, if someone's naming the price and the terms, it's yeah. not going to be fair. It's not going to be balanced. Oh yeah, exactly. And- Cause you could be like, I'll pay way over what it's worth, but I'll, you know, I'll pay you something where I'm still cash flowing a bunch and then we both win. But for- there, there's a balance to it. And then, mm-hmm. Again, this, I was riffing on Chris B- Voss, but I love this. We, we bought the master class right uh, yeah. at the brokerage. And so I watched his whole thing and he was talking about like, it's about like coming to an agreement. Mm-hmm. Kind of like I was talking about with sex. Like it's yeah. like it's about you both are, <laughs> you're both ex- <laughs> you're both excited. Obsessed. I am obsessed. I love He's sex. Got so two I mean, kids, like, I know. always think about it too. I'm like, what is better, like reverse cowgirl <laughs> or like just seeing my children smile? And I'm just like, I don't know, man. It's they're both so great. <laughs> <laughs> I love you boys, and I love my wife. Hi. Uh, but but it, it is a great example because I feel like it is so much about like you both have to come to the table and say like, yeah. how do we get the, to the end together? Not just for me winning and you losing. Yeah. Like the true art of the deal is oh, like, yeah. we're both stoked on what happened there. Exactly. And, uh, and, and I kept telling her, I was like, look, if I got to take some risks on, so do you guys. And they were like, we won't, we can't blah, blah, blah. And I was like, it's okay. just not going anywhere. Yeah. So, so now it's, it's vacant. So at, at deal maker, is it, was it called deal? Ma- deal maker weekend, deal maker weekend. What was like the number one thing? Was that the number one thing you took away from it? Was that it, that you can't have one person set the terms? Or, I, or something I else? can't tell you the number one thing. I'm oh, not allowed to tell this you. This is like you're burning, man. Yeah. There's so much going on. You're still processing, bro. I'm still processing. <laughs> you're still processing. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just, um, no, it's, it's, that was just one of the things that kind of fit into this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but was, was it muddy out there or something? No, I mean, he brought up burning. Man. It's like, <laughs> no. no, it's just that you get, you download so much, you get poured into so much really? that you have to, yeah, you can take yeah. like at least like four weeks to really like a good process. It. Yeah. Like a good book or experience it. Like it's going to pop up. Like you're going to have epiphanies <laughs> later. Like, Oh yeah, this is what they were talking about. Right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Good stuff. laughs> <Sounds good. laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, you did just close on a property that you were, uh, agent on, um, yeah. out in Joshua tree, amazing oh, yeah. property. And like you mentioned, this is one of those properties where this is the Joshua tree property. This is the one where it's gonna, it's gonna get, you know, people in there. It's going to get booked up. I don't know if they're using it as an investment. They are. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And, um, yeah, maybe thanks, you can, man. Yeah, was, you can, it, was it, was it like that when they bought it or did they rehab it? No, they, they they bought a, a brand new like turnkey. Okay, and uh, it ticks off a lot of the the boxes, the area, the the lot size, what they can do with the property. Um, I mean, you want to look for a couple things when you're when you're looking out there. Um, y- modern builds are huge for the the renter now. Breaking away from like the the market of the pandemic. And getting to like what what is the longevity market of Joshua Tree, where it's cash flowing and it's still great, even when you see the headlines of like, oh, Joshua Airbnbs are done or whatever they, you know, mm. whatever they say. I don't watch the news. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but I I see these things. I yeah. see them when I'm walking by and I hear people talk about them on their Instagram stories. So, uh, the longevity, the 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 general market out there, you want these things that are uh, properties that have great Instagrammable features and modern stuff like modern builds like do really well out there. And if you can get 
everything on your buy box found. I mean, that's like just top notch. We're like, oh, this is gonna be great. So this property is just it's just gorgeous. It's got a lot of space. Uh, it's gonna be you know knowing your markets there. You've got the uh, you've got the downtown market. You've got residential market there. You've got the deep desert, and this is a deep desert property, which is just. I think it's the best you can get. I mean, my buddy Patrick jokes that like when he first started going to Joshua Tree to invest, he's uh, he's like, oh, it's on a dirt road, and now like he's like, oh, it's on a dirt road. Like this might be a good one. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of romanticism for us going out there, especially since a huge part of the Airbnb guests, the vacation rental guests out there, are LA people trying to escape the madness of LA to just go somewhere where it's like, oh, it's like peace and quiet and like far from things, and there's not as much light pollution and stuff like that. So this property is like down a dirt road. Uh, the, 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 the avatar for the guests that you're going to have, there are going to be some of the nude sunbathers. It's definitely going to be like the stargazing people that don't mind that it's far away. And they, they know ahead of time, like, Oh, I'm driving. It's going to be a dirt road and it's going to be like hard to find at night. And it's that, that romantic thing is what they're looking for. If you market that property, right. Also it comes with the in-ground hot tub. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. So they, I think they they do need to do an in-ground pool to really like bring it up to like top like add value level of it. Okay. Wow. So it's like it's turnkey officially, but like you definitely want to put a pool in there at some point. But yeah, other than that, it's just like gorgeous little house. I, nice. I know I feel good about it for my client when I'm like, I, I want this house. Yeah. Like I call my business partner. I'm like, hey, Camille. This is it. I fucking want this house, dude. <laughs> like, can we get it before I sell yeah. to my client? Like, <laughs> can we jump in there? Uh, I, I wrote a treatment for a for a, a, a comedy where Will Forte is a billionaire uh, real estate agent. And like he just gets back at people, revenges people in his life by like outbidding them for properties. But he's the agent. And it's just Will Forte going around like, hey, hey I got it. Like just yeah. grabbing it. Like, So I joke about that with Camille. But I'm like, yeah, dude, I, I feel it when I'm showing a client a property. I'm like, oh, this is a good one. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I felt that one with this one. I still feel it. In fact, I made a video about it and got a call from someone mm-hmm. who's, who's now a client and I'm, I'm helping them find something, but they were like, I, I actually just want to buy that place. And I was like, Oh dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's already sold. I sold it. I helped <laughs> my client buy it. Video? I hate to say I sold it. Cause I feel like I'm not a salesperson. Damn it. But I, I helped my client get it. Yeah. yeah. Pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. So and that's like where they they were looking for something in Joshua Tree. So how do you how do you kind of find the ones that's perfect for your clients? So we have like uh I've got like a, you know like a map layout where I know like oh that's that spot's cool that area is cool that's not cool that's not cool ooh that's cool right there. Um, I work with my buddy Patrick too who also like knows the exact spots that he likes where his uh are, are all located where he's like those do really well those don't so you just kind of start knowing the magic sauce and then. Um, like anything in life, you just know what the property needs and you go, Hey, if we can have a Venn diagram that gets most of these things in the middle, we're good. And if we can get all of them in the middle, we're like, dude, this is just such, I mean, it's investing. So it's all risky at some level, but you're like, overall, you're like, this is just going to be rock and roll show. I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. I love it though. It's, it's so exciting. Like wielding the sword when you're like, Oh, this is good. That's so so friggin' fun. (laughs) I need more money. I need more money. Cause I'm just like, I want to buy that. I want to buy that. For sure. I uh, use other people's money. I had a guy uh, on the phone, an agent, let me call his client directly. Cause I was trying to negotiate with this guy and he's like, the clients just got their, in their head. They want something else. And I was like, let me just talk to this guy. I told this guy why I wanted to buy the property, what I was going to do with it. He takes it. Uh, he raised the price first, eventually took it off the market. I just talked to the agent today. This is like six months ago. Just talked to the agent today, asking him some questions about another property he has. And I was like, hey, what ended up happening? He's like, yeah, he's put in a pool and blah, blah, blah. And I just I just literally, what do they call it when they spray the, uh, it starts with the G, right? When they do, when they spray the pool, the cement in there oh. after they've dug it. Granite. Granite. Is it granite? Granite. No, there's a different name for it. Gra- gro- granite. Groping? Granite. Gro- Grope. <laughs> <laughs> it. Gunite. Yeah. Gunite. He just did gunite. the gunite. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm glad he took notes from me and yeah. kept the property. He's doing every value add that I planned on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good luck to you, sir. If you're watching this, yeah. I'm still gonna end up buying that. You're going to fail with that property. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Mazel Dove, I wish you the best. Um, but uh um I forgot where I was. I was so excited about that property. <laughs> yeah. I, you get crushes on properties if you're like into aesthetics and like oh. you like to like I feel things when I walk in properties. Like, oh, oh I like the way okay. This feels. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I have a crush on that one. I you, still. You, you sound very f- much like my wife. I was. Uh, I got a call <laughs> from, not not female <laughs> oh, Okay. I was gonna say, I'll, I'll kiss get, you for I'll the right there. amount. I need to buy some I'll property. Get there. I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a longtime investor. I've been he's been investing with me for geez, 
10, 15 years now. Yeah. Um, and he called me, he said, Hey, go look at this property in San Clemente. And so I went, I took my wife with me. Oh, yeah. well, that was the first mistake, I guess. <laughs> took her with me. She goes, how much do they want for this property? Uh, 525 at the time, I think it was. Oh, gosh, I think we ought to keep this one for ourselves. I go, <laughs> well, how do I do that? You know, call the guy back and say, yeah, my wife wants <laughs> us to keep this for ourselves. So like, you're out. You oh, know? So anyway, that sounds like so you. Great. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, well, what I was saying was like, what kind of like one of my litmus tests, the coal mine canary for me to know, like when I'm doing right by my client is to know like, Hey, I got that feeling for the property. Yeah. So okay. I know when I'm advising my client, like, cause if I get the other feeling mm-hmm. for the property, I'm like, there's something about it. I don't like yeah. it. I've told clients like, Hey, um, you can do what you want, mm-hmm. but I think we should move on. So you have feelings. Yeah. You see dead people too? No. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the whole thing about that movie? He doesn't know it till the end. Yeah, like, yeah. wait a second, what? So maybe yeah. I do and I don't know it. That's right. yeah. I talk to a lot of inanimate objects. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My cats have God. great conversation skills. Good so. feelings. Mostly good feelings. Yeah. yeah. I try to try to not stress about the bad vibes when I get them and, you know, just move on quick. Right. Yeah. So swim past it. But that works. Yeah. That's it. I, I would love to buy some properties with your wife and just hold them and not, not, yeah. uh, not, not turn them yeah, in. She, she'd them. be happy too. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Maybe there's a yeah. partnership for me here. I do, I, I do love the idea of holding <laughs> properties though. Like, I mean, you and I've talked, I'm always yeah. just like, I just want to hold properties. I don't want to yeah. sell them and make a profit. I want to keep them. Yeah. Like it's, I like to, I like them. Yeah. I'm a Lego building kid. Like I mm-hmm. see the property. I'm like, Oh, it's like a tangible, beautiful thing. Yeah. It's so, a real life monopoly. Yeah. As long as they make dollars and cents, it's yep. fine. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that is the thing. Yeah, yeah, we've been looking in uh, different markets, possibly doing midterms, um, long terms. Uh, but it seems like, yeah, every time we, we kind of come up with an idea, <laughs> then we find somebody who's like, midterm rentals are done. That was like, <laughs> I think. You know what I think is happening, Alex, which is frustrating, is uh, what, kind of what we were riffing about earlier. It was like, okay, the person advertising and selling the book on it, they are already there when it's an emerging market. And instead of looking at like the local real estate on the map is an emerging market looking at a niche in real estate being an emerging niche. It's like, by the time I'm reading the book about 30 day stay, which I love, that's a great book. Uh, it's like, Oh, that niche has already kind of been like, it's started not to say it's done, Mm -hmm. but it's like, all this stuff involves work, and I was really excited to just have passive income. Where is that? Where is that? Am I, I'll buy the, the the car wash from Breaking Bad. Just give me something. I just want to chill a little bit and just know I got That's my bills paid. business. Right? Car wash? Good business, yes. Yeah. Good business. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If I find a car wash, that, can we go in on one? Uh, coin up laundry. Yeah. That's yeah. Good job. Dude, when I lived yeah. in Mammoth, one of the professional snowboarders yeah. owned a, a coin op and people yeah. used to talk about it. Like, he owns mm-hmm. this coin op. And I was like, what? He's rich yeah. off of it. Yeah. Swimming in quarters. Yeah. yeah. I was not, not paying yeah. much attention, but I was like, that's so smart. This is, you know, 20 <laughs> something years. Go, you go to his house and he's got a closet full of quarters in there, you know? He's like, how much do we need yeah. to go out tonight? It's, it's <laughs> almost like that politician that had gold bars in his jacket sewn <laughs> in. You know, it's like, what the hell? What is all that about? Yeah, that's dude. crazy. You gotta yeah, hide that's, it. that's weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cling, 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 cling. Yeah, that's like, weird. Like, <laughs> strange. Where do you get his jacket at? <laughs> Brooks Brothers. I'll be there in a second. Yeah. So, I mean, what what do you think the most truly passive thing in real estate is? If you had to guess, or I know you know, but sleep. <laughs> no, but like <laughs> you can make money. Did you say sleep, Joe? Yeah. Oh, sleep. that's genius. But like, what what vehicle can you get into? To where you're just straight collecting a check and not doing anything. Well, you always have to do something. You have to generate something to get something passive back. Well, you, you but put there's money different in. things, mm-hmm. you know, like you were talking about rentals and stuff. Yeah, rental, you get passive income, but, you know, when something breaks, it's not passive anymore. You have to go out there yeah. and fix it, you know. Um, note investing, I would say, you know, you, you buy a, a, a note for. Mm-hmm. Hundred thousand, and you get the money coming in every yeah. month. You you don't care what happens. There's yeah, nothing's going to happen. They're going to keep paying you. If they don't pay you, then yeah, then you have to get up off your you know behind and go do something about it. But um, I can't think of anything else that yeah. would be I, like super super passive. I have right. money in, you in know, a syndication. That's boring to me though. I have passive? money in a syndication passively. Oh, there you so go. You, just, See, you sit there. That's, yeah, that's boring. That's it's passive. like you know what? Put your mark money in the stock market. Same thing. It's true. But I mean, at least it's in housing and not in the stock market. I don't know. I feel like it is more, uh, more valuable for society in real estate. And I, 
I am learning from being in somebody else's syndication as they're the operator. I like like getting their emails and keeping up with it. My buddy's close with the the uh, you know active partners, so I get kind of like little inside stuff, and so it's fun. But uh, I guess that answer is like passively like that's is, a way to do it. But is Bernie Madoff involved? I don't know. <laughs> It's actually a Bernie Burn. Sanders fund. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm it's, once again you know, asking I, for a cash call. It's like um, I, early on my career, I was involved in a lot of syndication type stuff. Yes, yeah. that's what we did back then, 40 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and now we get the same emails. You know, not I didn't get emails because we didn't have any emails, yeah. but I get the same. You know, like pigeon dropping off little scrolls. Yeah. <laughs> monthly <laughs> newsletters and stuff. Oh, we're doing great. We're doing great. It's going yeah. up. It's going up, you know? And then all of a sudden the next one is like, Oh yeah, we've, we've imploded. It's just not oh, going yeah. good. You know, it's <laughs> 1980. Yeah. Okay. 1980. You know, I don't know if you're old enough to remember Jimmy Carter. I was a little baby at the time, but I'm, okay. I was alive. Yeah. But if, if you like, <laughs> if Jim you Morrison were, was if my you mentor, remember he back died, Jimmy but, Carter days, it's like deja vu today. Yeah. You know, well, I, I bought my first, not, not my first house, my third house, 16% interest I was paying. Oh, wow. Yeah. Inflation was out of control. You know, it's just like he couldn't send some people over to Iran to kick their butts and they got killed and then they was a, a lot of hostages. But anyway, that's a different subject. <laughs> You Welcome know, you back look, to the Joe Rogan you, podcast yeah. again. You look, you look now and it's like, uh, yeah, we've got inflation. Interest rates are at seven, seven and a half, eight percent around there, and we're in two wars now. Dude, wow, well, it's dude. Like, it's a say. That's why I don't watch the news. It ain't yeah. happening. Yep. I don't know what you're talking about. Two wars. You haven't seen what's <laughs> happening in your homeland. Well, I'm American. <laughs> uh, I see. I have seen, and uh, you know, if you want to start getting into philosophy, no, I no. don't no. like if it's not a tangible thing in front of me. I'm like, I don't know who to believe about anything anymore. Yeah. And I don't trust. Like, I'm not a part of any political party. I don't trust. Like, alternative news has turned into what people used to say about mainstream news mm -hmm. when they were like conspiracy theorists would be like, it's yeah. just a couple corporations running everything. Yeah. It's like. Do you ever like read about asteroids? Have you ever watched some of the movies about asteroids where they're like, if we blow it up wrong, right. it'll just be a thousand little asteroids. <laughs> it's kind of like what happened to the media. Like media was bad when it was just a couple corporate entities like telling us what the corporate masters wanted us to hear. And then they're like, now with YouTube, it's finally free media and people can just, and then now I'm like, yeah, but a lot of them are just idiots spouting off stuff they don't really know about. And now we're just like misinformed by more people and not corporations. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know what to believe. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't keep up with it. I'm just like, pray to God that everybody gets through the portals that they're going through for pain and <laughs> peace, my brother. I just want peace for uh, humans to just thrive. That's off it. topic again, but I was on a Zoom call yesterday, and, and the only reason I was on there is because this guy booked it. He wanted me to evaluate this software that he was, you know, developing. Yeah. And it said Israeli time on it. And I go, whoa, <laughs> that's interesting. So he pops up on the Zoom call, and I go, are you really calling from Israel? He goes, oh, yeah. I go, like, am I going to hear some bombs in the background? <laughs> he goes, well, the last Zoom call I was on, yeah, there were some bombs. Jeez. But, you know, I'm in Tel Aviv, which I, I don't I mean, I couldn't tell you on the map where that was, but yeah. it's it's a little bit safer area. We only get bombs every once in a while. Yeah. Go, wow. Okay. Crazy. By the way, your software, yeah, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. He's all, you dropped two Moving bombs on, on me. Yeah. So are you Moving buying on. the software or yeah. not? No, no. <laughs> that's, his, that's his sales pitch. He's like, I'm dealing with so much over here. You got to just buy a subscription. It's $29.99 a month, bro. No. Oh, no. man. Yeah. Didn't work. That's so yeah, funny. Let him yeah. That's so funny. Well, <laughs> oh, my God. Well, as far as, you know, the you paying 16% interest back in the day, uh, what's going on now? What, what What's your, I mean, I I know that people ask us, non-real estate professionals ask us all the time, like, uh, what, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> and we go, yeah, let me look at my crystal ball, bro. <laughs> right, right. But real estate agent to real estate agent, just candidly without anybody watching us except for the live footage, what do you, what do you, what's your prediction for like the next six months of real estate? And what so, do you think we should be doing to position ourselves? If, if I told you that, I would have to charge you 25000 for my course. <laughs> That I don't have yet, but I'm writing. By the way, can yeah. I do a spit take? Does anyone mind if I do yeah. a spit take? I know this is a really yeah. nice equipment. I was I've, about to... I've been, <laughs> I've been through three up and downs. Yeah. Okay, and they were like clockwork. Every ten to eleven years, they were like here, yeah. you know. And it was like, first one, 
it was like, what the hell happened? I bought this condo for $50,000, subject to, by the way. I bought this condo 40 years ago, and I still have it. 40 years ago, um, subject to, 50000 went up, 125000 boom, first one. Went back down to 50. I go, oh, <laughs> shit, I should have sold it. You know, do you think like you're in the stock market or something? But, yep. You know, no. So I kept on. I held on to it. It went up to like 250 the next time. And boom, went back down again. I go, what the hell is going on with this real estate market stuff? This last one, 2008, it was up to 500,000. Boom. It went back down to 100 this time. I'm going, whoa. Really? I go, whoa. Yes. Yes. That was 08. So, though. what do you think I did when it went back down to 100? What would you do? What would I do? I don't yes. know if this is going to, if, if there's a right or wrong answer. Personally, like I do what I was taught to do when I read books about investing is you just forget about it and you go, okay, cool. Like I'll let it, I'll let it sit and come back okay. up. Would you do anything else? If you had money. You had, this is the caveat. If you, had, if you have money, you had three times you've experienced this. Oh, I so buy, 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 buy. Everything's on sale. You. Things That's are on sale. Buy. That's yeah, okay. what I did. I <laughs> thought you meant with that property, like what I yeah, get rid no, of it. No, like, no, no. That property is going to stay in, you know, my kids are going to inherit that property, yeah. not me. Or maybe me. I mean, yeah. I'm like your or wife, right? You. We're really close. Yeah, right? That's true. Like, I would love to inherit it. Is it in the beach city in OC? Yeah. So, back to your question and to answer your question, it's a different market right now. It really is. It's totally different. I thought when we got up to the seven or eight percent, uh, interest rates that the market was just going to hit bottom again and it was going to fall apart. But here we are. Yeah. Okay. The the three things that drive a market are um, interest rates. Yeah, we're up there again. You yeah. Know? Um, employment's also a big one. Yeah. But like, if you want a job nowadays, you you can still have a job. It may it yeah. may not be the you know being a comedian. Okay, but. Yeah, you roll right. Job. In, you roll right into that <laughs> real estate job. Yeah, and you know, and the next thing is the banks. If the banks don't get crazy like they did in two thousand and eight, and they had all the warm body loans, and yeah, we'll, we'll give you a loan on this property. How much do I need to put down? Nothing, hundred percent. You know, it's like well, if they get crazy like that, that's the only thing that's going to bring the market down. But nothing's crazy other than the interest rates. That's the only thing crazy. So I don't see the market falling yeah. like it did in 2008. And you see a lot of people, because I watch a lot of YouTube, you see a lot of people, and, and Alex says it's clickbait, it's going to fall tomorrow. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. It's I, like the end of the world, you know. I don't see I, it. Do I you have, see it? Oh, I, I I don't see that. I mean, I, you know, try not to catastrophize after I made a promise to my therapist years ago. But <laughs> I, I think that, like, the, the I know multiple, I have multiple clients. I call them clients, but they're friends and family that I've been helping for years, try to move them along. You know, it's, certain people are not motivated and you're just like, you back off. Some people you've known, they've come to you and you're trying to help them. Uh, I have a nice, more than I can count, little handful of like friends that are either conspiracy theorists or just down that YouTube rabbit hole that have missed out on the market for the past five or six years. And they've just keep telling me now, even now, I mean, mm -hmm. I know people with incredible access to money that have seen inflation ravage their money and still say, I'm just, I'm waiting. It's about to crash. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay. You yeah. just kind of look at like any conspiracy yeah. theorist. You're like, all right, man, like just go yeah. outside and see that yeah. that's the world. It's <laughs> not in this little, the boob tube or whatever they call yeah. it now. So I, could they be right? The broken clock right twice a day thing? Sure. Like at some point markets crash, but mm. I just look at it numerically again, like with my grade school math, you go, <laughs> here's this little area, Right. Like I'm over I'm in Glendora or, or Laverne, right? This little little town, little city in the foothills. And there's five houses available in this neighborhood for less than a million dollars, right? And I go, all right, we are in one of the places in the world where people immigrate to from all over the world, where people invest from all over the world, not even immigrating, just coming over here and investing money for safety and security from their weird governments or whatever else. I don't see how, like when you have five houses available, even if that goes to 10, how you're going to drive prices so far down because no. it's just supply and demand yeah. barring something catastrophic with employment and the dollar and you know, the Zimbabwe uh, effect or whatever runaway mm -hmm. inflation or deflation mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't see that. And I don't want to bet on that. I also like, I, the other thing is from a spiritual sense, I have these people that are like, I'm just praying for a market crash. I'm like, you <laughs> asshole, you're getting down on your knees and begging your God or whatever it is. <laughs> 
for everyone to have a catastrophic <laughs> failure of the economy, mm -hmm. for people to lose their life support <laughs> physically and financially, mm -hmm. so you can get a discount on a house? <laughs> Little bitch, fucking find a friend and <laughs> figure out how you guys can go in together and buy your expensive house. Like, don't go. be praying for a crash. What's the Bruce Lee thing? Like, pray for the strength. Don't pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to get through a tough one. It's like, oh, yeah. I mean, who doesn't want an easy life? I mean, sure. <laughs> But I'm, who's going to sit there and put that energy out there like, I just hope the market crashes so you know bad that, <laughs> that a house in Costa Mesa is only 300 grand. It's like, do you realize that you will have to have way more bullets and skills with your <laughs> sidearm if it gets that bad? Like, I don't want to barbecue human meat. Like, I, you know, like just save up and get a good house and pray for it to go good. It yeah. me crazy. I had a client. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't actually was a, now back to Joe a client, with a little bit of a square perspective. Wasn't Someone's... a client. It was a guy who booked an appointment to have lunch with me, and we sat down. We started to talk. Really nice guy, and he says, "Joe, I've been stalking you for ten years." I yeah. Go, what? I go. What trigger. do you mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I've been following you on LinkedIn for ten years. That's how old Joe is, guys. He's been on LinkedIn for 10 years. Oh, right, on, than that. But anyways, I go, thank God I didn't feel you stalking me. But why were you stalking me? Well, you know, I was going to buy some stuff. And then I changed my mind and I, you know, left California and oh. I bought something. And then I came back and like, look what happened. And I go, you know, I have people like you tell me that all the time. It's like. Yeah, Joe, I'm calling you again. You remember we talked like three years ago and you told me to invest. And yeah, I think I'm going to start thinking about it. You know, <laughs> it's like, and I get a lot of those calls right before tax season in April. Oh, because people meet with their accountant and the accountant goes, oh, shit. You're like, you better like invest in something here, yep. you know, to get some depreciation. Because if not, <laughs> Uncle Sam's going to grab all your money, yep. you know? And I, so I do, I still get a lot of those calls that yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and what, what do you, what, what do you do when, when someone tells you that? Do you say, all right, let's do it and yeah. test out their motivation to be yeah. like, are you oh, absolutely put the work in if yeah, you're ready. I, I know they're not going to do anything, yeah. you know? Yeah. But you know, they just call me uh, to tell me that yeah. they're ready now. Yeah. Right. I just, yeah. <laughs> you don't I feed that. those that aren't yeah. hungry. You just go like, all right, yeah. cool. Like, let me know. I'm out here working. Like if you need yeah. it, I'm here in the fields. But, uh, yeah. the ones who are actually motivated to call you and say, Hey, I talked to my accountant. I want to do a cost segregation this year. Um, how can you help me out? Oh, I, I can get you something in this market. What kind of cash flow are you looking for? Oh yeah. There's something here. Like let's get your pre-approval. Let me get your pre-approval on file. Your, mm -hmm. your proof of funds, mm -hmm. you know, screenshots mm -hmm. good. I have a whole thing. I'll tell them. Get that on file, set you up with a search. I'll validate everything that you say you like from my search to handpick things. If you can't go, I'll go out there and film it for you, give you my honest opinion. Or if you can go, I'll set up showings. And before you know it, it's just like shopping. You'll be like, this meets all the criteria. You're pre-approved. You got your money. Let's go do it. And they do it. Oh, I need to sell this first. All right, let's sell your property first. We'll do it this way and this way and this way. Here's what we can get for it. And the people that want to do it, it's like, okay. They, they go, yes. Cool, let's team up together. And I, that's all you can ask for in this uh, in real estate. It's like people that like yeah. are smart and want to team up, have mm -hmm. their own ideas, but also mm -hmm. flexible in the right spots. And just and then everybody else, you're like, all right, man. But I just know you're going to complain about the way the world works in a couple of <laughs> years because you're like, why do you guys do? It's like, well, we tried to get you to take the risks with us, and you wouldn't, and now you're mad. And like, bro, <laughs> yeah. you know, like you want to play, pick up a stick and shoot the puck with us. But mm -hmm. if you're going to sit over there, like, what are you doing? It's frustrating. I mean, it's tough. I mean, money's tough for a lot of people. I get it. You know, I was brought up with like a, like a clenching, you know, like the immigrant, like, Oh God, don't, they're going to, they're going to rip you off. Yeah. If you lose that money, you'll never get money again. And like, so I had to like break away from that eventually. And like, I try to get some of my artist friends to do it. And some of them do some of them buy a brand new BMW. And you're like, okay, that's, that's a depreciating <laughs> liability. I taught you about that. <laughs> now you can't buy the, pr okay. That's fine. And then you just move on to this person and be like, you, would you like to invest and do something for your future? How about you get a Honda and buy some property? Like there me. You go. <laughs> <laughs> the inflated ego. Right. I'm doing it right. Even though I don't know if I'm doing it right. It's, it's a quick journey. I'm just riding a wave. Oh, God. I, I've got a, a, a real estate question for you. Oh, God. I know we're, we're running uh, like over on time. I thought here, this was a philosophy do we, do podcast, we have, Joe. Do we have anybody on uh, asking any questions or anything? Or no are we question. just. Like dark here, sleeping. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> let me ask you this. Yes. You've heard of the NAR lawsuit. Yeah. Okay. I, I know as much of that as I do about the uh, conflict in the Middle East. Okay. I'm like, yeah, they'll okay. figure it out. Okay. So my, my question is, 
I'm a seller of a property. I'm going to list my property. I'm going to hire you. Yeah. And I'm going to say, I'm going to pay you 3%, but I'm not going to pay a buyer's agent 3%. <laughs> yeah. I want you to list my property for zero yep. uh, to the buyer's so agent. Okay. Yep. Tell me. Tell you why why that's a hilarious idea? No, tell me tell me what you would tell them or 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 what your feelings are. I would ask them, I'd say, hey, like is is your is your bottom line important to you? Like or is it knowing that you're you're getting a leg up on someone by not paying a buyer's agent? Like is it an emotional thing where you're like, I don't want to be ripped off more than I have to and agents make more than they want, or is it your bottom line? It can you tell me Are we role playing right now? No. Can you tell me that I'm going to get less buyers? Okay, I, remember we're in 2023. We're not in 1980. I won't talk in absolutes because I'm just not an absolutist. So I'm not gonna say you won't get, but I would say it's highly likely that you're gonna leave money on the table and that subconsciously a lot of real estate gets done. And what I mean by that is um officially, yeah, you're gonna get you're still gonna get a buyer and you're still gonna get top dollar. And no agent's supposed to deny their client that because we take an oath like, hey, if my client found a three-bedroom, two-bath that they want on the co- corner of 123 Main Street, I got to go get it for them even if there's no payment for me. But you bet your sweet little tuchus that when I'm going through and I have five people calling me that day and I have appointments to make and one of them says 0% commission, I'm like, what kind of weird deal is that? Like, I, I, I get immediately suspicious when it's less than 2% of like, who's listing this? Because like just out of like the general like stature of an adult just being like what i wouldn't take a client's listing that said offer 1.5 as a commission for a small uh, if you're luxury sure but like for regular people houses so i'm going to tell them that i'm going to give them that spiel and say like you have to understand that even though an agent's supposed to if they have five people they need to help that day and everyone else is paying them commission they're probably just by matter of priority going to be like i'll get to that later but do, like, don't you think that buyer is just going to go around you and it's go possible. To, to the listing agent it, directly? It's possible. And here's where I'm not as good as people that are hardcore salesperson. Like I'm much more excited and look in the mirror at myself, like as a happy person being like, I'm a consultant that like teams up with my clients and helps them buy or sell stuff. But I'm, I'm not good at that. Like, and I, and maybe that's a fault, you know, maybe it was a fault for me, you know, we're doing a therapy session now. Maybe it was a fault for me <laughs> when I was in entertainment too. But like, if the door gets slammed on me like that, I'm just like, oh, okay, I'll just go where the door is going to get well, open. Wouldn't you like ask the buyer, Hey, they're offering nothing. Are you able to pay me 2%? Yeah. I mean, I, if, if I have to go to that, I, I guess we will in the future because what I do see happening, my prediction is that while the middle class is being sold this whole, like, it's easy, click a button and it's done, right? For mm-hmm. everything, right? Mm-hmm. Like Purple Bricks mm-hmm. was trying to do and uh, mm-hmm. Open Door and all these companies. Middle class is going to eat that up. And I actually lost a deal a couple of years ago to someone's like, we went with Redfin. And I was like, really? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. because they're, they don't, they're just not trained to like think about this stuff, right? And they're just going to be like, oh, that's way easier. It's like when Saab said that they weren't going to let you negotiate on the price. It's like, that's not to your benefit. Mm-hmm. That's for you to walk in and pay their sticker price on things. But people be like, it's easier, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I think the middle class is going to eventually be like, oh, my AI negotiated it for me or whatever else. And they, you know, whatever they do, pay however they pay. And I think upper class luxury people are going to just continue to hire like human beings to do things for them that like only human beings can do until AI can outdo that. But like, I think that like luxury buyers and sellers and people that make good money or work with humans regularly face to face are going to be like, yeah, of course I want an agent to do that. Like, what am I a broke loser? Like, <laughs> and then middle class and poor people, and that's probably going to be the same thing at some point, right? Are going to be like, oh, dude, I just pressed the button and I got this house. I'm so happy. Oh, I got to go to bed. I have to be up at four because I have to commute six hours. I mean, so you think the people that it's supposed to help? No offense to anyone watching. Too, yeah, you're a you think total that loser, the, the people that it's supposed to help, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's going to hurt. I think it usually does, but yeah. but I also think with progress, some things that I'm saying are like, oh, it's not going to be a thing to worry about because there's also like hidden miracles in it too. So it's like, is it bad? Is it good? I I think I'll just hopefully, you know, if I if I'm blessed enough to be working with people that are still looking for an actual agent with you know one brain and two balls, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> That just makes you more. It's just like regulation in the short-term rental world. It just makes you more valuable when you're like, "Oh, I'm a professional, and they're, and they're so I can suntan. play by those rules." Huh? And they're suntanned as well. And they're suntanned, right? <laughs> <laughs> One brain and two tan nuts. 
Don't ask my wife. Should Thank I? you. Not that Tim. I appreciate your comment. Yeah, thanks, man. It. I appreciate yeah. the question. It hasn't, hasn't changed my mind, but I appreciate your comment. <laughs> what, what, what is your feeling on it? No, no, I, I'm not going to say. No, I'm excited here. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say. But you've got the wisdom. I'm just a a, a, a dipshit. I, 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 think, I think I'm just a dipshit. Does I think, ideas. I think the writing on the wall, and you kind of alluded to it, the buyer's agent is going to be a thing of a past. You yeah. think so? Yeah, it's going to go dinosaur. I think we're going to go... I don't like being Especially a buyer's agent anyway, to, so. to, you know, <laughs> like you said, to this AI stuff, I, you know, you see, you actually see it today. You know, when you write an offer, you go on the MLS, because I'm sure we have the same one. Yeah. There's a little button there that says, submit an offer. Yeah. You, you you walk through that, it takes you to Glide, and you just put the basic stuff in yeah. to the contract, to the legal contract. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be the same thing for the public. Yeah. You know, it's going to be listed out there. They're going to go, hey. Put an offer here. Just push this button. Oh, it's gonna be easier than that. Like you're not gonna have to. Okay, you ever go to like a sightseeing or go to a museum? Like in like you go to New York and you go to Mocha or whatever, and they give you the little headphones and you can listen to it. And it tells Alcatraz. you Alcatraz. I was just Alcatraz, saying. right? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's Joe's like that's my art museum. Yeah. Alcatraz. Alcatraz. <laughs> it's like paintings. Museum. I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is where Al Capone yeah. took a dump. I'll yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, so you get the little thing on, on your side, yeah. right? And you, yeah. and you listen to it, and you're like, oh, it's like kind of guiding me through it. I'm like AI is like right around the corner from yeah. that. It's like the movie Her, you know, with Joaquin Phoenix, but it'll be a realtors doing that and lawyers and all the other stuff. I, I mean, I honestly, yeah, no more buyers agent. It's like I kind of like the excuse of like I can't help you with that. I get get fucked. You want to buy something? Good. Have fun. <laughs> Let me know when you want to sell it. Cool. And I just take that off my to do list and like I'm gonna go for a bike ride. Maybe I'm making less money. Maybe I'm making more for just helping sellers. I don't know. Uh, I think maybe you could make a business out of like, did you get burned by your AI <laughs> buying a crappy building and you're ca caught up in a 200 year contract? Like hire me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll get my, my lawyer degree or whatever they call it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't the know. The AI is going to tell them everything. It's going to say here, this is a great buy. And this is why, because we've done all the calculations yeah. and everything for you. Yep. You know, this is a no brainer. Do it. Either do it or we're going to find somebody else yeah. that's going to press that button. I think when we get to the, to that point, though, Joe, I'm like, I mean, getting back out of the real estate and just getting back to my favorite thing to do is talk philosophy or just life or whatever is like it's going to be unrecognizable in a lot of ways like life, you know. So I, I don't know, like if it's sooner than later, but I know that they, the actors uh, with their, their union lately, one of the big gripes was like that the studios were like, no, we will not guarantee that we won't like use AI and copy your image and do it. And it's like, I thought it was like humans like trying to work together so we could all have jobs. And now we already have humans in corporate like master positions going, yeah, I don't not worry about my fellow humans. And you're like, um, dude, the robots are going to win so fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Maybe they'll cure cancer and like there won't be real estate jobs to have and I could just like go to the beach for once, you know? <laughs> right? We're so close to it. I just want to go to the maybe beach. Maybe we'll get to the point where you don't have to work at all. Yeah, I think Pod. you still want to be of service. Pod. I think you know? I think humans are kind of like retirement for yeah. me. It's like if I retire, <laughs> what the hell do I do? You know, I go to the beach, sit there for 15 minutes in the sand and go... Okay, what do I do next? I mean, yeah, maybe we're all just like going to be like Buddhists, like meditating and be like pros just sitting everywhere like this. Like, oh, wow, dude, I'm in the moment. I'm in the moment, man. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Well, Eckhart Tolle be so proud of us. Don't disturb him. He's yeah. in the moment. That's yeah. Joe's nightmare. You know, that's Joe's nightmare. <laughs> nightmare. The moment. Oh, yeah, I'm God. going back to Alcatraz. <laughs> yeah. But, but Joe, I think, I think uh, like there's so many changes around, on the horizon of that that I just ha have faith that overall humanity's got like tunnels to go through, but we'll be all right because... Mm. We generally are, and, I, and no matter where people are on their political spectrum or whatever else, you know, you, you interact with people, and it's like humans generally, at least of a certain class of people, look out for each other and want to keep the tribes, you know, going uh, in a positive, supportive way. So, ho hopefully, there'll be jobs for us still with real estate, or we'll be working alongside like real estate AI, and won't just they won't just be the bosses, but we'll you know work with them or, or whatnot. Or like I said, so if, if this makes any sense, so oh, yeah. they're complaining about the 6%. Yeah. But the attorneys who won the case, Oh, I they saw get that. 30%. I saw that there was like a billion dollar thing that the attorney, yeah. like made it's it like, how, how are you complaining about 6% if your attorney's getting 30? I think that, out of this deal, I mean, I don't know when it happened, but like expecting any more from like a large group of people being fed stuff from the media, like what do you expect them to do? But, act exactly like how they're predicted by the masters that like put that stuff out there, you know, yeah. <laughs> masters, master <laughs> bedrooms or master media. I don't know. Like I, yeah, I don't expect people to react much like, like they do as individuals as a group. So I'm well, just like, I'm going to try it. That's what the, uh, to answer your question. I'm going to try it. Yeah. Yeah. How much bad feedback you think I'm going to get from, from agents? 
from agents by zero. saying like, hey, but you zero zero look on the at that and it goes zero. I mean, I just honestly, would you call? Like, huh? Would you call me if it's? Oh, well, I mean, now we if, know each other, so you may call me. No, because I don't look when I see a lower than two percent on a regular price list. If you if you're looking at a three million or a five million dollar listing or whatever, and you're like, okay, like they're still breaking off a large chunk for fees, and okay, they're. But if I'm looking at uh, a nine hundred thousand dollar condo and it's one point seven five percent, I'm like. Who's this agent? They're gonna be a nightmare to do a deal with. <laughs> like immediately, I'm thinking like, who's this part timer that's like, I'm helping my family. You, we all so know you, that guy. And if you're watching this and you're, you're a part timer helping it? your family, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not gonna show it then. Is that what you're saying? If I mean, thank God I'm busy right now, so no, I'm just gonna be like, oh, dude, yeah, that looks like it's gonna be a nightmare. I don't trust that there's something fishy. The same way when they show you a property, when a client sends you a property, the other things are red flags, uh-huh. and you're like, this isn't good. I'll call the agent to find out, but. Yeah. I'm, am I going to have time to call an agent that's listing something at 1%? You, I'm going to be like, this you, is kooky. I think you alluded to before. Do you set people up on drip emails? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever set them up on a drip email that says, do not send anything less than 2%? No. No? No. Seriously? No. I mean, if a client wants to see something, I mean, ethically, like, I thought that, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I just I assume since I've always been a naughty boy that gets in trouble, I'm like, <laughs> we probably have to show them no matter what. Uh, so, like, if they see something, I'm going to I'm gonna look into it for them. But, like, I'm just I'm just busy. So, it's like a, a what do you call it, a utilitarian decision mm-hmm. to just be like, yeah, I don't have time for that one. I don't know what's <laughs> going to go on. Like, real estate is a freaking amazing dream job when you're dealing with great agents and great clients when you're dealing with nightmare clients and nightmare agents it's a nightmare Mm -hmm. and it's like dude you work so hard for so no pay so often they're like if it looks like a nightmare i'm just like "Ah, that's cool you guys have fun i'm too i'm I'm, too i'm gonna put you on the spot again yeah put me on the spot i'm (laughs) sorry on the spot with john shesky and joe (laughs) the most difficult transactions do you have and i'm sorry for this question no dude the most tell me i'm a young whippersnapper transaction you've had is it with a Male on the other side or a female? Oh man, <laughs> he's trying to trick me. This is cancel culture. <laughs> it was a trans person, actually. <laughs> and they, no, I, 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 I. That's a great question. I mean, my very first deal, I had an agent that knew I was new, and she was so abusive to me that my my mentor would put it on speakerphone and mute it and just be like, "It's all good, dude. <laughs> it's all good, dude." And I was like, "Okay," and I'd be like, "What do I tell her?" Like, uh, so I, I've been I've been brutalized here or there, but I mean, I'm even doing a deal right now with an agent that I'm like is is very exhibiting signs of paranoid personality disorder, and like I'm just like. What are you trying to make this so difficult for? Like, my client's super cool, did everything you asked. We released contingencies. Like, what are you doing? I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, if they got a, an Innie or an Audi. They're just people are trouble, you know? And, you know, when you start to, when you get far enough into the deal, too, and you didn't know it was going to be that way, you're like, you seem cool. And then now you're like, he's not cool. He's like, abort, abort. But you're just like, your client wants this property and yeah. you're going to get there. And, yeah. and you so. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't say who's who's been better or worse. I definitely can say this: that different areas, because I, I'm a road dog realtor going to different spots. You get used to like when you call an agent in Glendale, how they answer the phone, versus when you call an agent in Redondo. Like, Do they actually answer the phone? Oh, dude, it's come the on. best. You can just see the affliction shirt in the background and the white Mercedes. Ninety-five out of a hundred <laughs> agents that I call don't even answer dude, the phone. Dude, Glendale, like you literally will have agents that go like, "What?" And you're like, really? "Hi, is this the right <laughs> number? I'm calling about the condo." on by the grand or whatever this is the brand place and they're like oh yeah what and you're like how did you get a listing like that's what, that's what i was like whenever a listing agent's kooky i'm like how did you get the listing like i can't imagine like walking into a listing maybe that's their technique what? yeah i want an agent who's gonna represent my property that is just so cutthroat and mean yeah. they're gonna get me the most money how, how many I- pictures did they have posted <laughs> yeah, cell phone, <laughs> cell phone pictures. Yeah, I didn't care when pictures. I saw the three percent uh, buyer's agent commission. I was like, they're legit. <laughs> this one's gonna close. Uh, I like that. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff, man. I love it, dude. Right on. Well, that was that was a hoot. Like I knew it was gonna be oh, um, so much fun. Yeah. So if you guys um, have any residential real estate questions, you need a property listed. Or John was joking; he does represent buyers. Um, give him a call <laughs> for now, and <laughs> especially with Joshua Tree. Even if you're, you know, you're thinking of buying, um, you know, like uh, some sort of investment, or you're gonna, I don't know. People do live out there, so uh, <laughs> he's like it's Tatooine, the Tuscan Raiders. <laughs> the sand people are in the hills there. There's a lot of bantha riding and meat out there. It's good. 
<laughs> it's hot during the summer. Give, give him a call. What's the best way for people to reach out to you? Uh, the, there's a uh, should I should I give him the my uh, wherever you want, yeah. link on my YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah. go to my YouTube. It's uh, Chef Real Estate. S H E F. R E A L E S T A T, Chef Real Estate at YouTube. I got a Calendly link in there. Book a free consult with me. Find out if we're a good fit. And if we are, let's rock and roll, baby. Let's do it. Heck yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. This is so much fun. Absolutely. What a, yeah. what a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and, and before we go, mm -hmm. let me know what you guys think. I'm going to do a 0% listing to a buyer's agent. <laughs> So I want you to give me in the comments down there what your opinion is on that. So clickbait this yeah. zero percent yeah. listing. We're gonna do it. Okay. We're gonna do. We're gonna make some content out of it and see yeah. see what kind of calls. See we get. what see what happens. Yeah. In fact, if you're watching this right now and you want to put me through some pain, hire me as your buyer's agent and let me do the deal with Joe for zero percent, and we'll film the whole damn thing. Ooh, there's, <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's good. I like that. That, that is that's good. good. Oh, my yeah. God. Okay. That's good. That's good content. Well, I mean, yeah, it'll yes. be worth it. Right? That's good. <laughs> well, and we'll let you know when the property is uh, coming live, and uh, you know, maybe we'll feature it on the show. So Nice. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much, and um, it's been a real blast. Make sure you share this far and wide with your friends, new or experienced investors. See you next time. Take care. Thanks, guys. If you want some more advice on real estate investing, reach out to us one-on-one. -on -one.